Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Epiphany. Today's reading is from the first letter of Peter, chapter one, verses ten to sixteen. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that was to be yours made careful search and inquiry, inquiring about the person or time. That the spirit of Christ within them indicated, when it testified in advance to the sufferings destined for Christ and the subsequent glory, it was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves but you, in regard to the things that have now been announced to you, through those who brought you good news. By the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, discipline yourselves, set all your hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring you when He is revealed. Like obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires. That you formerly had in ignorance, instead, as he who called you is holy, be holy yourselves in all your conduct, for it is written, "You shall be holy, for I am holy." This is the word of the Lord. Remembering our great salvation. Most days we take our salvation for granted, but then there are times when we come to know the value of what Jesus has done for us. In the utter bleakness and hopelessness of death, we might be struck again of the good news of the resurrection. In times of stock market crashes or business failures, we might truly understand the meaning of an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for us. Chapter one, verse four. When we have done something so egregious that our conscience cannot minimize or rationalize our actions, we might come to understand the true freedom that comes in being cleansed by the blood of our Lord. Peter has been telling us of the greatness of our salvation in this chapter. Here in our section, he tells us that the Old Testament prophets predicted and looked forward to the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ in verses 10 to 11. Even the angels long to get a glimpse of this Jesus and the greatness of our salvation, which we take for granted. But we ought not. Our salvation is unimaginably great. Therefore, verse thirteen, or in the light of the good news of the gospel, Peter tells us to prepare our minds for action. That phrase in Greek is literally "gird the loins of your mind," which makes sense if you imagine a Greco-Roman tunic. If a Roman soldier. Was to run off to a battle in it. He had to gird it in his tunic. In other words, he had to tuck in his tunic under his belt so that he could run. He is saying, "Be ready in your mind to live in the light of the gospel." How? Well, what he says next helps us. Discipline yourselves, he writes, or as ESV puts it, being sober-minded. ESV here is closer to the original language. We are not to be clouded in our judgments, but to be clear-minded and set all our hope on the grace that Jesus Christ will bring when He comes back. Verse thirteen b. Initially, when the COVID lockdown happened, people marvelled at the air quality and how far they could see without the pollution. I myself had had the experience when I hiked up to Lion Rock the one day during the lockdown last year. I could see not just the Victoria Harbour and the IFC, but even the other side, the, the south side of the Hong Kong Island. Most days, however, the air in Hong Kong is clouded. Likewise, our minds are foggy too, and we do not see the greatness of our salvation or the hope of the grace that Jesus Christ will bring. Wealth and comfort of this great city cloud our minds. Self-righteousness and self-reliance make us think little of our salvation. Fear of tomorrow makes us lose sight of the eternal hope in Christ. Friends, 
Our salvation is incomparable to anything this world has to offer. Will you gird the loins of your mind? Will you be sober-minded? Will you live a holy and distinct life and not conform to the patterns of this world? Our salvation is worth nothing less. Let us have a time of reflection. Go back to the beginning of this chapter and recount how Peter describes the greatness of our salvation. What clouds your mind from seeing the greatness of our salvation? What does it mean for you to truly set your hope on the grace of Christ, to live out your calling to be holy as God is holy? Let us pray. Dear Gracious Father, we thank you for our salvation, which even the angels long to look. We thank you that we know the meaning of Christ's suffering, death, and resurrection through the power of your Spirit. Help us to see the goodness of our salvation and the greatness of the inheritance that is coming, so that we might set our hope on your grace and live a holy life. In Jesus' name, Amen.